IDM fair is mostly based on PostgreSQL and uh, Oracle as a database as a backend. And here I am trying to present how the PostgreSQL has been a very advanced open source database which is uh, handling terabytes of data with a very busy systems. And most of the proprietary vendors say that claim that PostgreSQL doesn't have the high ability, business continuity, OLAP options and advanced security options. Right? So, so we normally present all these to the, our customers so that to make sure that they are comfortable uh, before they are coming on open source databases. Right? So now we are where to, uh, topic is PostgreSQL Hiability with Business Continuity Plan and uh, DB migrations help in drastic cost reduction. So another chapter is how we are helping the customers to saving their huge license, mod, uh, license cost to save their business profit margins. So here is the agenda, Hiability cost involvement for HA and BCP. When we are talking about the HA, Hiability, people normally consider the if there is any cost involved for obtaining the Hiability and the business continuity plan. HA business continuity, how we can achieve with the manual failover. Some customers say that we don't want to, we don't have the budgets, but we want the Hiability options, right? We can afford few minutes of downtime. Some customers say we don't have any budget problems, we can go for the automatic failover. So for both options, we have the designs available for the <coughs> customers. So DB migrations, what DB migration methodology we do use for our customers. License cost, we have given one example, Oracle to PostgreSQL cost margins, how cost savings. Support partners, open source and Q&A session. So now why HA is required, right? Now IDM fair is going in a is growing and lot of customers are already in the implementation in the live stage and the data is going to grow at a very high speed. When the data is going to grow, there is automatically backup and restore options comes in. So when the backups, DB sizes are growing, backups will be a challenge, restoration options also a challenge. So downtime is a major challenge that is called recovery point object. When the system doesn't have the high options, you always need to have the your recovery point objective will be very high because if you have a database of around 500 GB and if you want to restore that back, if you don't have the high empty systems, if you want to restore back, you may enter into 5 to 6 hours of downtime. That depends on the your, the downtime keep on increasing as your DB size keep increasing. How we can achieve this? How can we avoid the, uh, minimize this with the recovery time objective? With the high empty options, PostgreSQL Hiability features, streaming replication, logical replication, HA in PostgreSQL with PG pool. So when we are talking about here, all are the open source open source tools and open source contributors. There is no proprietary third party tools are involved over here. Right? SLS, once we are there, we are committed to provide the service level agreement with our customers. Business continuity. So mainly whether it is a ERP system or OLTP system or OLAP system. Business continuity is the main challenge for the critical applications to make their systems up and running 24 by 7, 365 days. So cost involved for HA setups, we have just given one, when if you see the existing old uh, model HMD options, people are moved out from the like Oracle has its own Oracle Rack HMD system, uh, operating system level cluster softwares were also there. Then they need to use to have the very special hardware. They need to have the SAN storage area networks are required. So special SAN storage requirements are the costs are involved. So when you are involving the cost, then you are get achieving the along with the software cost, hardware cost also involved for the proprietary databases. And when you are going for the open source, the existing system we can use without any any special hardware requirement. We can achieve the high the options. So if you see the comparison, so these are the various advantages customers are going to get with the <coughs> open source solutions. So in hardware utilization, when in the native systems, if you say like Red Hat cluster source, when they have the SAN, the second node is always be idle. So it was waiting for the, when the primary dies, then only second node will take over. So, so the whole system, one of the node was always 100% will be idle till the primary goes down. But in our case, in both the SQL side, both all the systems are up and running, you can divert your read queries onto the replicas. So that you can best utilization of your hardware and the money. 
so native inbuilt so all these replications like logical replication if you want to do cluster level replication we have this uh, streaming replication and cascading replications are there if you want to do the replication for the only ddl objects few tables few uh, few indexes few schemas then those also options are available with the logical replication so so there are streaming replication reduce recovery time why we need to achieve recovery point objective is higher if we are obtaining the higher tree we are reducing the recovery time how we are recovering because your data what you are inserting on your primary it is automatically syncing with the secondary now right if your primary goes down automatic uh, if it is a manual failover few minutes of downtime your application will be up and down in case of automatic failover that vip will be automatically failover to the secondary node and your application doesn't know yes they need to reconnect so these are the synchronous asynchronous options very cascading option advanced features replication options are coming with the postgres <coughs> server and more so i'm going to say this like i know what i'm talking about but i'm really asking a question in my experience streaming replication is the is the dominant is the dominant means by which you do replication and for us i think that asynchronous streaming is the default solution that most of us would use what are your thoughts is that yes. is that even so close streaming, to be true? streaming see asynchronous synchronous asynchronous all the two different streaming replication is a part of these are the methodology synchronous replication and asynchronous are your process of the implementation right depending upon the customer requirement so in case of synchronous so what happens is if synchronous means if the two nodes are up and running yep. if one of the node goes down then applicant still connects and make the transactions but in case of uh, sorry uh, whatever told is asynchronous in case of synchronous one if the two nodes are up and running if one node is if you are taking one node down your application will stop till this node comes up right so synchronous we only recommend only when if you have a confidence on your hardware you have confidence on your network right but in this case synchronous you will have a 100% down uh, recovery time so up time so why because you give the guarantee of your hardware and network will give the database 100% up time so is there may, may I ask a question yeah yeah please is there anyone who uses synchronous replication no streaming Mm-hmm. Streaming, 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 streaming synchronous replication. RDS, RDS using streaming replication. RDS, Amazon using streaming replication. But do they, do you, I'm saying, do you use synchronous or asynchronous? Uh, this is only read-only replica we are using. Mostly yeah, asynchronous. asynchronous. And so my understanding is, is that the, I don't know which one, is it the master, or is it the main or the read replica that knows how far behind it is, <coughs> if it's asynchronous. Because typically, what you would do, I think, is have like a monitoring system, and your monitoring system would review how far back your yeah. basically. You 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 come with a very good question. In synchronous, what happens is the data is written. Both the nodes are up. It is why 100 percent because the log is automatically valid there, right? Because both nodes are up. In case of asynchronous asynchronous replication, your transaction, your valid file, transaction file size is 16 gig, 16 MB. in size right in case of asynchronous replication if you lost that file if you suppose your system crashed but that file got not applied to replica you will have 16 mb of data loss but if you have that file available on your system you will have it. so that guarantee we cannot give in the asynchronous one but you can you can but you can measure how far back your re replica is correct so it'll it'll tell you how latency yeah latency is normally 99% 99 latency won't be there right so 0.001% in case if you still don't want that people will go for synchronous so when the synchronous but we need the commitment from the hardware and network side okay nobody can take to both the system needs to be up in case you are taking the even though you are taking the server down for some time maintenance operation your application will hang Because it's waiting for the another nodes to come. Have one question. Yeah. Is is there any of these replication techniques selective? Can I filter the tables or the DBS schema? Yes. When 
then uh, that coming up in the next slide. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so cascading repetition. <laughs> so depending upon this, we can have the multiple cascades, right? If uh, to answer your question. So when the primary, this is the primary node, right? So data is replicated to stand by stand by stand by stand by from there, right? So in case it is it, that the first level of standby is in the one data center, second level of standby is in another data center. If we design like that, if suppose our data center goes down, we should have the data in sync in the second second data center to divert our queries to the to make it master and make the application ready. So here your DML operations, <coughs> update, delete, and inserts are happening on the primary DB. You can divert your reporting queries, select queries onto the replica server. By making your annual thing or load balance. So the way that you have you will write the queries uh, without uh, transaction basis, then the <coughs> normal select queries will be diverted and diverted onto the replica server. So this is the wait, wait, best. Wait. So say the comment one more time, please. Select queries, right? If suppose you you are doing the select queries or reporting reporting jobs that you are going to find. The database itself will prompt the call to a. You can make a call to standby database instead of primary. And via PG pool or via the database itself is smart enough to, to broker that call? Yes. One is if you are acting in a support to do it directly or you can give it directly to the host name of your standby DB okay. for a particular job and you can divert your report in a very small user. Because you, you, if you want to use your best utility of resources, because you know that when primary DB is mainly for the OITP systems, if you want to fire your reporting queries on the primary, your performance will be impacted, right? So because the the data extraction from the primary DB during the reporting will be large enough. So all the memory if you get utilized from the primary DB, then it may impact your OITP transactions. To avoid that, we recommend the OITP OLAP queries to happen on the standby server by giving, making your connection request to a standby instead of primary. Okay. So, for, for one, may I ask one more question? Yeah. But in terms of, you may have access to the future, in terms of, uh, in a larger database, when you have cascading replication, if you do need to create a full backup, you would do it from a replica, is that correct? Only first time, while you are building the replica, you need a full backup of your primary data. In, in our case, there are times when we have, um, so in the case of Identifier, Identifier holds the configuration in the database. Right. So it's right beside the, 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 there's the application data, which is the configuration, and then there's the actual user data. Those are co mingled it's whole co mingled So, but application data and your user data will be residing in the Postgres right? They're, uh, they're both in the same schema. Right. <coughs> so for me, there are times when you have development teams around the world, they don't have access to your production system. So the only way you get them a snapshot is to give them a database backup okay, of some versions. So there are times that we periodically we do need to get a full backup for the purposes of distribu distributing the, uh, the configuration that's inside the database. Okay. Either if they are going to only the select operation, you can build a replica like the cascading one. You can give to your developers to do only the select operation. So they don't. They would. <coughs> they would not have access to a production. Database. They wouldn't have access to any of these replicas. Okay. Because the because the app, because the configuration and the user data is in the same schema, you would have to obfuscate. Yeah, the user data before you would ever distribute it to someone outside of the production system. Then you, you can make the two, instead of putting your user data and in the same schema, you can bifurcate schema to the two different schemas, user user data and the application schema. Have we considered doing that? That actually would help quite a bit in the current situation. So, so in today's world, we have one schema, and the schema holds both the user data and the application data. So in my in my cases, the, the development teams don't have direct access to production systems. The only way we we, we distribute it to them is via a backup. Um, it would be pretty it would be pretty advantageous, especially in terms of distributing the application data, 
without having to do extensive obfuscation of the, of the user data, they're able to have two different schemas, one for, for the application data and then one for the other client's data. I don't know how, but it, it, I'm just saying it out loud. So you, if you make the different, right? By using your logical uh, dump and store option also, you can just uh, take the dump from the replica and you can give it to uh, uh, your developers. There's, there's quality standards, data center standards, that would govern those two, the user data and the application data separately. So heterogeneous replication, apart from the native replication options inbuilt Postgres SQL, we, there are requirements that we may come up to extract data from the other data resources like Oracle, SQL Server, from flat files to Postgres SQL. We have the various tools are also open source semantic DS. So currently we are implementing all this with, with our already implemented in our, one of our customer sites and they are in, in progress right now. So HA business continue with manual favor. Now the say customers say that okay, I want my I don't know I cannot afford it all time, but I need a higher value, but I don't have limited budgets, right? So in that case, what we suggest our customers to go with the two two node higher value system. In this case, you have only a few minutes of only one or two minutes of downtime because for the changing of your connection string from master to the new replica, new master. So that change needs the change at your properties file. So that will be very minimal. In this case, still people can achieve the RT. Right? Here you reduce your downtime, you reduce your data loss. Data is already synced. If you one of your primary goes down, but you just making the changeover of your new IP in your connection sync, JDBC properties, and you are taking your database up. Once it is becomes primary, you will take this fail node as a second standby node and you can start rebuilding it, get into the replica. So in that diagram, you have an application that has PG pool one built into that first box. So in our case, we use, we have a, a connection pooler built into the application server itself. What is the load balancer in that situation? Is that PG pool as well? Yeah, PG pool. PG pool has a load balancing feature as well. Connection pooling and load balance. So is it is it dangerous? So if if I dip here as a as a connection pool, PG pool is also performing connection pooling. If IDMFair has that connection pooling, then we don't have to use over here. That depends on us. If you only enable, then we can use that feature. If you don't want that, we can disable that. Right? Minimal budget if and there is no special hardware required, no special cluster software required, no additional cost to the customer. Still he can achieve hardware. It just needs few minutes, few seconds or a minute of downtime. Now the customers have mission critical database, say that I don't have a downtime, I cannot afford a downtime, I, can pro I have a budget, but I don't want to spend huge amount of money on the proprietary software. <coughs> we have the five node cluster, why we are doing the five node means we are requesting a PG pool as a two separate nodes to make a PG pool failover. So in case if the PG pool goes down, so the PG pool we have to automatically turn into PG pool number two. Right? So application is connected to the PG pool. Here there is a, you are raising a another level of security as well. Because your port, database port is always be hidden. You are directly connected to the PG pool port, that is triple nine, uh, four nine. Your Postgres five four three two is always be hidden, or you can you can expose that. Here you can mention whatever your high security LDAP options or single sign on. All those things we can deploy at the PG pool and the Postgres SQL. So this is the five node. We normally this is called a full proof architecture. We normally recommend to the customer. In this we have a, we remove all single point of failures. So these first two, uh, these are in the one data center and we will recommend the business continuity another server in the second data center. If somehow if like 911 attacks, somehow it goes down, one data center goes down, you have up and already seen data in available in the data center. Then you, applicants start up and running, then you can start building the failure. 
<coughs> so that is the reason these all automatic failover you are here it also works on the vip virtual ip so you are directly connected to the virtual ip not to their physical ip or private ip so here we can guarantee 99.99% sla service level agreement business continuity dcp all have to be with the complete business and business without any spending any single penny from the pocket on the existing hardware best best hardware to utilize why we are saying best hardware utilization because we can divert as i said select queries we can divert to the requirements any questions from the hierarchy and the business continuity plan sir i i hope i answered your query not completely sure so could you go back to the previous slide you go back So, in, in which of these cases could we filter not just the DB schema, but for example a set of tables? We wanna replicate maybe just ten tables of the ERP, but I don't wanna replicate the whole DB schema. Is that possible? Yes. Is this? this is the cluster level replication. <coughs> the logical replication is the object level. This one. Okay, this one. Let's see the logical replication. Okay. So that depends on your case-to-case -case requirement. No, PG dump is a snapshot of the objects that objects will have with the data you are taking at that point of time. It is a replication. <laughs> Whatever the changes happening on the live database that are getting replicated to your only particular tables or particular schema. <coughs> See, certain times I don't need my database size is 500 gig. I don't want. These are the cluster level replications. Whole cluster. You cannot selective. <coughs> So then, what I'm trying to decide is, do I, is, is I only have so much time to learn certain technologies, or are you even consider certain technologies? My question is, given what Pedro said, is logical replication something I should even spend any time on? You can you can run streaming and logical in both up and running. It's not it's not a matter of can. It's a matter of should. Should should I? Is there any reason, given your knowledge of how we use identity? Is there any reason you should use logical replication? <coughs> See, uh, for your case, if you are separating out your two schemas, application schema and the user schemas, right? If you want to refresh the data for your developers, either you can use the dump and restore option, right? If suppose they want only the application data to be refreshed, so they can only the application your schema uh, file will be restored using the PG restore. If they want user data, they have the both options, but. If you don't want to go with that option, <coughs> unless your developers need a most recent data from the current database, live database. If they doesn't need the live data, then you can use the PG dump restore option. If they doesn't, if they want logic, uh, real data from the live system, then you can go for the logical replication. Now, how can we use the logical standby when we want to do reporting? Right. Because we can extend the schema. Same schema, we can add columns, index, and all. Ah, if you want to create a materialized view, you can create a materialized view. Okay, yeah, it's logically relevant. Okay. Uh, next question would be the performance um, implication. So, if I am activating a logical application because I want to send some of my tables for data analytics to another server, is there any, is there any impact? in my master database because of that is a delay or something like that in the performance we haven't observed any uh, i don't think that it is also a val based applications <coughs> so uh, i don't think that we have seen uh, we already implemented multiple customers pg logical as well as uh, streaming application performance i don't think so there should be anything because we don't see didn't see any latency among the very uh, high transaction overhead now db migrations why db migrations are now hot in the market right because every customer wants to save the money save the money from the licensing cost why licensing cost increase licensing cost didn't increase software vendor didn't decrease the licensing cost hardware is becoming cheaper and cheaper and the systems are coming up with more cores and more processor speed and that leading customers to buy the go for the higher hardware to accommodate loads But when they are moving from the existing <coughs> system to the new system, they need to go for the extra cost for the license, right? So here we are 
why we are this is very important oracle sql server mysql edb all all these are the proprietary software right like mysql is acquired by oracle and the oracle features in, uh, incorporated into that so mysql is sold sold as a proprietary proprietary software edb also it also established from the postgres sql community only so postgres sql they are put, putting their own layers and they are selling it out so all this coming up and we are talking about postgres sql community postgres sql which is a complete open source and we are migrating to community postgres sql machines it is what we will get customer benefits one time migration cost if you you will be a free from your vendor locking people customer don't want them to be locked in they want to be freed from all these support costs and the licensing costs right no license cost large profit margins community support actually why why i i just on uh, the first session uh, all said that we have a yearly versions right 7 8 9 10 why open source community is having coming with only yearly versions why not for the four years or two years like the way that proprietary vendors are coming up postgres sql also comes up with the yearly major version in the last quarter of the year because customers doesn't want to depend on the patches right so the if you see the release cycle of the proprietary vendors they have the 2 to 3 years major versions release that's the reason they need to it, it makes mandatory to take for the support options to get the patches or the fixes but here before the patches are getting fixed if the issues are coming up the patches are getting fixed in your next release so the waiting time is very almost near about less than zero okay and mostly when in the policy sql stuff we when 15 is coming up we normally recommend to customers to go for the 14 version so that major of your bug fix is in the next release so it's one time migration methodology we oracle to policy sql it is not a direct migration and uh, there is no tool available uh, in the market that can claim that we can migrate complete oracle to policy sql and we need to perform the assessment program first whether the candidate uh, oracle system is good candidate to migrate it off or not depending <coughs> on that we will give the costing and the migration process will be stopped here we take the responsibility by performing <coughs> all your system business logic converted into the policy sql by setting up your test environment on the policy sql and changing the code from the application side your developers can take the ownership to convert that uh, the changes in the application side and test user level testing and load testing then we go for the live implementation and the support options so if you see the uh, i just give the uh, cost comparison how the software costs are increasing drastically if you see the processor oracle processor your your oracle is charging per level, per for 47500 us it just for the enterprise edition license right when you, if you are looking for oracle clustering solutions replication additional cost data guard additional cost advanced security so if you are looking for a critical application all these are mandatory <coughs> if it is a banking application all these become mandatory for them right so they cannot if they cannot take only uh, one primary server and they, they cannot stay with uh, setting up the replication or the data guard they have to do that when they have to do that they have to pay the money like so if you see the licensing and the support cost for an okay no doubt about that oracle gives 40% or 50% one time discount but the amount of locking that you are making once your application business is running on that it becomes a challenge for to market of to so how triage can help identify because we can because identify also when it keep growing because the way that we are seeing the challenges for the policy people expertise and the skills right uh all these implementation when the data because erp system will grow data in size very quickly and all these partitioning options hierarchy options critical uh, support all these needs to be mandatory apart from your the idp idp support policy sql going to play a very key role so it makes sense that shiarch and idp can become a hand in hand together right that help each other so that idp we have the shiarch where we can take all your implementation on the policy database side and it also becomes uh, 
I am will be grateful if we can. I work as a database architect. If you, if there are any changes that you you need, you are feel free to reach us, and I can be more helpful for all your designing and schemas and whatever the help that we can provide to make this item fair ERP a success uh, to in the coming future. And uh, another thing, we also already we are talks in progress because we are open source lovers. Why we are, why are coming over from here from Pune to from India to IDF? Because it is a open source. That's the reason it makes me to come over here so that okay we can we can do something for this thing the way that we are doing for the Pune sequel, right? And we are already discussing with the Odu uh, Open ERP as well to make our partners so that. ERP, Odo ERP also uh, implementations are going, there also PostgreSQL is getting used. Wherever PostgreSQL is going to get used, we want to be a partner with that, with those organizations. Any questions? <coughs> like I've been queuing up performance best practices. I guess that, that's one of the more frequent issues to uh, item your customers. Right. Um, have, have you guys developed with your customers any kind of best practices? All, all of them create indexes, coordinate your developers with your VBAs, things like that. See, I just, uh, I see that uh, NCO tool that we are incorporating the Docker Postgresql version. <laughs> see, that that is coming up as a developer <coughs> point of view for building your uh, your product, I don't fear to install. That's okay. But when you are going for the large implementation or implementing the live implementation, you need to design the PostgreSQL data structures in a more flexible architecture way. Otherwise, when the data keeps growing, you will hit a performance because you need to do a certain management and maintenance activity in a, on a regular basis. Otherwise, if you are not doing that, the data will be overwritten, you may end up in the data will be lost and the correction will happen. Yeah, realistically speaking, when you are implementing an ERP, you already have the data. Okay, so you already have 900 tables. Right. If you are the DBA, you need to monitor those tables in a kind of agile process. So any developer, any report guy that is creating queries, that is having uh, joins or crazy things, uh, they, are, they are affecting the performance. So my key question here is, other that starting to check manually the database as a VBA, VBA. Is, is there any Postgres tool or yes. any practice? That's a good question. To, to catch See, those, to catch those queries, queries, right? Unoptimized okay. queries. Yeah. We have various tools. When we, as a part of our remote DBA services, all this will taken care of because checking manually from the command line is not an option over yeah, here. Right? We have various tools we will deploy there in the customer environment. And all those database logs will be collected and will create that HTML reports. Okay, these are the queries that have been uh, executed in the last 24 hours. So these are the bottleneck queries, and these bottleneck queries will take it for the optimization. Okay, so we use Glowroot. Which ones are Glowroot? Glowroot. Yeah. That, that, that provides you real time uh, SQL execution. But PG Badger, for example, is a yes, log log yeah. so PG Badger issue with PG Badger is only like uh, if we are in RDS database, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hard to configure. Mm -hmm. Even we have done, Ivan has done uh, configuration PG Badger in uh, RDS, but uh, RDS imposes some restrictions on a log, and that's why the it's it's not easy to get the log that PG Badger needs. But Glowroot runs from a JVM directly. And it's not only give you uh, SQL performance, but also it gives you all the JVM uh, statistics. <coughs> so it's a complete uh, solution for I will ask for the permission. Thank you. So, one, thank you for coming. Um, I, I'd say when, when you but we look at the challenges that we face. One, when you first get started, PostgreSQL is a little bit of a black box. You start learning different tools like PG Badger and, and, and other tools. But over time, you, you face, you, you want to be able to set up monitoring. 
right? Whether it be the uh, uh, Xamarin or um, some other some other visualization tool. So if you if you wanted, in my humble opinion, if you wanted to, to join the community, I think getting that sort of providing like a Kickstarter for being able to monitor uh, so that the, the community could be able to actually start seeing data issues. Like for example, blocks. I can run a, I can execute a query from the command line all day long and see it blocks. Or I can write a, I can execute that query, push it to a file and have to have to read that. But it would be nice to actually have uh, like a Xavix playbook that would say this is how you this is just the, the minimum needed to be able to monitor your database. Monitoring. Yeah. So you said JAPEX, I think we can we normally recommend uh, Nagios. Not Nagios? Yeah. yeah. The second thing is is that when the customer comes to us, I can't speak for everyone, but I oftentimes work based on tickets. So those tickets represent some sort of call to action, and that call to action represent, oftentimes represents some sort of change. So there are times when you're planning that, that deployment of that ticket, and you need a phone fan to say, hey, here's what I think should happen. And it'd be nice to have an expert to say no, or yes, or and have a common dialogue as to how we do it. That's the second thing we need. The third thing we need is that uncomfortable situation where you get to 2 o'clock at 10 o'clock in the morning, the application just went down. You check logs, box, there are no logs. You check the HTOP, there, there's, you've got plenty of CPU power. Yet, for whatever reason, this one query won't come back. So, again, See, going back to having someone that you can... To, uh, all these things we are providing are our remote database support services. So, it's so, so for customers, right? So it's a ticketing base, even though I answer the ticketing base in an email, right? If the opponent, I don't know the environment of the customer environment, right? This is a DBA task. And if the customer is making a simple mistake, so it may lead to a big problem. <coughs> so that is the reason what we recommend. We will we'll prefer our customer to put remote DBA support services. Okay, we are always be monitoring our system under Nagios or everything. Before getting into the uh, model, we install all your full proof architecture along with your monitoring system as well for the customer. And we will do the proactive all the maintenance activities for the required for your DB side. Right? And if there are any locking issues, automatically we will come to know that these, these are locks and various alerts mechanism notification we already configured as a part of our service. So that would be a, a subscription service? We right, RDBA. So, if customer can 8 hour service depending on the customer uh, criticality. We have the basic model, it is called support service uh, 16 hours, 24 hours. Yeah. So, Monday to Friday, uh, out of work also we support that come under overtime. <coughs> yes. Critical system because we have the 24 by 7 systems, uh, DBAs are operating uh, for our global customers. So, anytime out of work also. Somebody is there to take care of your action, but that is out of work also, that will be charged as the extra. If the customers really want to do the weekends and everything, <coughs> they go, I will ask them to go over the 24 hours remote Any more questions? Thank you. Thanks a lot. <coughs>